Artists in Japan have been developing the craft of pottery making for about 7,000 years. Frequently, certain methods have been handed down in a region or in a family. In Otani, on the island of Shikoku, the Mori pottery, operated by Mr. Mori and his son, specializes in making very large pots. Because of the great size of the piece, it is impossible for the potter to kick his own wheel, so a helper supplies the power necessary to maintain the lightweight wooden wheel at an even speed. This particular pot will hold 300 gallons and weighs 600 pounds. The method for creating such a pot on the wheel involves a combination of coiling and throwing. After the first lump of clay has been flattened for a base, the potter works with large coils of moist clay which have been rolled by an assistant. These are three to four inches in diameter. Coils are vigorously and precisely knitted together under the potter's skillful hand. Then water is added for lubrication and the throwing stage begins. By this method of coiling and throwing, there is virtually no limit to the size of the pot that can be created. Although much of the work is done just with his hands, the potter does use a small piece of wood called a rib for refining the shape of the bowl from the outside and a piece of wet leather from the inside. Most of the large pots made in the Mori pottery are used for dyeing cloth or pickling foods. This pot, however, will be a container for growing lotus plants. Special attention is given to a strong, well-finished rim which will enhance the whole piece. When the pot has been finished on the wheel, it must be dried and fired. Most of the kilns in Japan are built of fire brick and insulated with mixtures of clay and straw. To fire the large pots, huge chambers are needed. In this climbing kiln, each of the eight chambers is 20 feet wide. After the pots have been stacked inside and the doors bricked up, long pieces of wood are stoked into the first chamber. When the kiln looks hot enough, the fireman pulls out a little piece of clay called a draw trial. Its appearance indicates to him how the heat is affecting the clay. He continues examining draw trials and stoking wood until the maximum temperature, about 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit, is reached. The other chambers are fired in turn, and the whole process takes about five and a half days. On the Japanese inland sea is the region of Bizen, which has given its name to a type of pottery. In the town of Imbe, Mr. Fujiwara, one of the best known Bizen potters, uses a wooden wheel with four holes. He can crank it by inserting a stick into any one of them. While he centers the clay, the wheel loses momentum rapidly. Therefore, he must repeatedly crank the wheel, then work while it coasts. Mr. Fujiwara makes Bizen pieces for the traditional, formal Japanese tea ceremony called Cha no Yu. This lump of clay is becoming a tea bowl, or chawan. To be sure that it is a proper size and shape, he uses a cross-like wooden gauge to check both width and depth. When the tea bowl is finished, it is cut from the wheel and placed with bowls previously thrown.
Another piece of typical Bizen ware is the flower vase, which is used in the tea house. This time, the lump of clay is pulled up into a cylinder form before it is shaped into the traditional proportions. Over the centuries, standardized techniques for making Bizen ware have been handed down from generation to generation. Mr. Fujiwara has become so famous for this type of pottery that he has been named a national treasure, a title bestowed by the government on outstanding artists. Only six other potters share this honor. According to traditional standards, the finished pot should reflect what happens in the kiln. The artist can control the surface enrichment to some extent by stacking the pot so that the flames and wood ash do not strike all areas equally. Thus, as on the flower vase and the sake bottles, areas with less exposure to flame and ash become red. Those more exposed turn gray. These reactions, plus melting wood ash, make up the rugged, natural glaze of Bizen ware. Not far from Bizen is a mountainous region called Tamba, which also has given its name to a type of folk pottery. The best known potter in the town of Tachikui is Mr. Ichino. A specialist in the centuries-old techniques for making tamba ware, he is held in high esteem. In 1958, he won a grand prize for pottery at the World's Fair in Brussels. One of the unique features in his method of working is that he uses the wheel counterclockwise in the Western manner. Most of the Japanese wheels turn in a clockwise direction. Here, Mr. Ichino uses the method of coiling and throwing to make a planter. Another characteristic of his work is that he rolls each coil in the air as he needs it. Otherwise, the process of building the pot is much like the work seen in the Mori factory. When all the coils are in place, he starts kicking the wheel and holding a small piece of wet leather, he pulls up the sides and shapes them into a planter. After he has created the form and carefully shaped the rim, he adds a finishing decoration. To do so, he uses a little piece of wood that has been slightly burned to bring out the natural grain. This textured wood, applied in different ways, produces the design. Now Mr. Ichino fills a bamboo container called a slip trailer with a thick white glaze and trails decorative writing over the surface of a pot. This trailing technique is characteristic of tombow ware. When the vase has been fired, the design stands out strongly against the dark background.
a load of pot such as this man is carrying weighs about 150 pounds. At the kiln, the pots are stacked together, then carried inside. This kiln of ancient Korean design is called Jagama, or Big Serpent, because in contrast to the chamber type, it is one long continuous tube, almost 150 feet in length. It has over 100 rectangular holes for stoking. The fire is begun at the bottom, and the wood is stoked through the holes all along the way to the top. Since the pots might explode if they were heated too rapidly, it is necessary to start the fire slowly and increase the temperature gradually. After the openings have been bricked up, there are two days of coal firing before wood is added. The entire firing takes about five days. The principal religion of Japan is Shintoism. This ancient native practice involves a worship of many forces and forms in nature. Although it is no longer an official state religion, many Japanese people have Shinto shrines in their gardens. This man brings an offering of food in a small pottery dish, lights a candle, and rings a bell to summon a supernatural spirit. Long ago, an emperor decreed that certain women near Kyoto, the former capital of Japan, should be commissioned to make special containers for imperial offerings. These little clay dishes were to be unglazed and unpretentious, made not with machinery or molds, but over a portion of the human body. This woman, using her elbow as a mold, is following a pottery-making method over 2,000 years old. During the reign of the Kyoto emperors, potters making these little dishes were considered very important people because they were directly commissioned by the emperor. And this little wooden stamp, a 16-petaled chrysanthemum, was used to identify pieces made for the imperial household. A highly refined traditional technique is the art of painting cobalt on porcelain to create a blue on white design. Mr. Kondo, president of Kyoto City College of Fine Arts, first lays out the basic design with a bamboo brush. While an assistant grinds the cobalt, Mr. Kondo applies red ink that will burn out in the firing. Using a mixture of cobalt oxide and water, Mr. Kondo places his signature on the bottom of the pot. Then he paints in his design of pomegranate fruit and leaves. Each stroke must be made in a precise way. The clay is porous and the cobalt very strong. Therefore, each stroke is permanent and no correction can be made. Next, with a weaker solution of cobalt, Mr. Kondo fills in some portions of the painting so that they will appear lighter blue after the firing. Although Mr. Kondo's skillful brushwork makes the process look easy, such precision can come only from many years of practice. Thus, the visits to the Mori factory, the Bizen and Tamba regions, the Shinto shrine, and Mr. Kondo's studio offer an insight into the traditional art of Japanese pottery making. <laughs>